Good evening, everybody. This is David again here with Shadow Six Creations. Um, so we're in a new year. Brand new year. Uh, some of you may have some really awesome re resolutions that you want to that you want to go with. Maybe one of those is getting into the world of the world and hobby of model aircraft, vehicles, figurines. It doesn't matter. Just just into the world of models. Well, where do you start? So that is where I'm coming in to help with a little bit. So I have been doing modeling on and off uh, since my time in Iraq. Uh, since I got back as a way to kind of cope with some of the things I experienced. Um, and back then, I didn't really care so much to make them pristine. I didn't understand. I had no knowledge of anything like that. Um, I would just do a couple models here and there, World War II mainly, because that's what I love to do. But um, as I've gotten older and in the past couple of years, I've done a lot more, uh, obviously with the videos that I've been doing, learning more techniques, learning more about the paints, learning more about contrast, so shades, so let's kind of jump in so we can look at some of the equipment and things that I use. So let's kind of back this out just a little bit so we can get a little bit of a better view. So let's kind of get started. Um, it's a little bit of a jumbled mess back here. Obviously, I've got a lot I've got to do with that. Um, in the box back here, of course, we've got the B25 that we're working on. But let's focus on let's focus on how to get you started. So we, the one thing that you want to kind of focus on, um, you're going to need some basic tools to get you started. So how else to lay down paint than with your brushes? Okay. So I use a good variety of brushes, um, when I'm doing hobbies. Now, please let me, let me just say this first and foremost, before we get started in no way, shape or form as you unless you absolutely want to, do you have to get what I have and what I'm using? Um, basic brushes, basic paints to get you started. Nothing wrong with that. With what I do, I like to have a better quality of paint and brush and tools and things along those lines. So don't be discouraged by what you're seeing. Uh, we're using this as an, as an example to try to guide you along the way. I want to make that very clear. So let's start first. So different types of brushes, um, as you can see. These black ones are, these are all Citadel. These are all made by the Citadel company. Um, this one in particular is a layer brush. So if you're familiar with uh, the Citadel paints or if you're not, um, they the Citadel paints have base, have base paints, layer paints. Uh, they have contrasts, they have shades, they have technicals. But well, we can get into that at a later time. So let's kind of start at the beginning here. And here comes my wonderful dog to help with assist with this little puppy. So our brushes. So there's a couple of different ones that I like to use. So I have a layer brush. I have a couple of small base brushes. Now I wanted to, to uh, the other thing before I go on further is the black ones are just a regular bristle. White ones are a synthetic bristle, so they actually last longer. Uh, this brush, as you can see, um, I've had for well over a year. Um, they do last a lot longer if you take care of them. Now, let's kind of jump back in this. So here's your layer brush, but I also use this for fine detail painting. Now, you want as fine of a brush as you can when you're painting details. Uh, prime example, let me see where did my little, where did my little helper go here? Ah, so detail painting would be putting on these black lines and you want as small of a bristle as you can, or as, as fine of a point as you can, because obviously you're not going to come in here with that. That's not gonna give you the fine details. 
Now let's jump back in a little bit. This is a this one is is a shade brush. This one is used to apply shades or washes, which are basically a watered down paint for lack of a better term. We can get into the scientific, everything else at a later time. But these are shade brushes that are specifically designed for that. Okay. Then you have a regular, uh, just a regular layer brush, just a regular brush for general area that you want to do. Now, if you're working on a big area, uh, say for example, like this uh, Flak 88, then you want something that's a little bit wider and a little bit longer to use. So those are kind of the differences between the various brushes. Now, um, we also have ones like this. This is, a, this is what is known as a dry brush. Now the bristles are a little bit stiffer because this is designed to what they call, what is known as dry brushing. It's where you're taking as little amount of paint on your brush as possible and you're spreading it over the, the model or the base that you're working on to give it a very subtle effect or to add um, a different element to it, for lack of better descriptions. Okay, so I have, like I said, I have a variety of different brushes that I use, but to get you started, let's take a look at this. So we have a fine detail brush, we have a dry brush, we have our base brush, which is just for general painting, and shade brushing, okay? Now, um, if you're just starting out, it doesn't need to be perfect, so don't worry about that. It doesn't need to be perfect. Go to Hobby Lobby, go to Walmart, go to Target, anything like that to get you started, and then if you decide that you wanna do this more of a full-time thing, then yeah, definitely invest your money in a good set of brushes. Now, what you see right under those is this nice little working mat. Um, this one is made by Fiskars, and it's what's known as a self-healing uh, pad. So basically, if I take... Oh no, look, look, oh no, I'm cutting it, I'm stabbing it. It'll kind of repair itself, is exactly what it's talking about. And these are nice to have because they come in small sizes, and they come in one, which my wife has, that is um, like a two foot by two foot. Now, I generally like to use something small like this. Uh, Fiskars is a very well-known brand, um, very good quality. So ones like this, it's got a, um, it's got a ruler built in already. Um, so it makes for a nice, and it also makes it easier because you can spill on it like I've done this. You're not gonna make a mess. Um, these $10, $15, you can find these in Walmart. You can find other ones, again, in Hobby Lobby. Um, great resources to work with. Now, let's kind of look at things for a palette. So what you're adding your paint in. Now, you're probably wondering why this really cool looking fidget popper is here. Well, let's take a look at something here. This is where I've been, this is what I've been using for my paint, okay? Now, you can use a, just a regular $2, $1 flat piece of plastic or anything like that. Um, or if you want something that has the individual colors separated, get one of these and I'll show you why. So you see how that's all dried up? Oh, it's going to cause a mess. Oh, well, it's ruined that. Well, you see how these push down? Watch this. And it just fell on the floor. But the point is, once your paint dries, you can just pop it out of there and look. Nice and clean. Now you can get these for five, ten dollars on Amazon or at your local hobby stores. Okay? Very handy resource to have. I love these. Now, let's talk about what do I need to cut the pieces off of my sprues? Now, as I say in most of my videos, when you're working with a sharp object, please be careful. You cut off your fingers, that's your own fault, I warned you. So, and I've also got a few other things as well. Um, I've got a, this really nice little set of pliers and side cutters and things like that from Harbor Freight. $7 for a little set like, like these red-handled ones. 
Um, now these are wonderful to have. These are just your regular side cutters. As you can see, they're kind of angled. All right. Now that makes it really easy for when you are doing something. So let's just say, as a matter of fact, here. So we'll use an old Necromunda sprue that I've still got some things on. So say I need to get that off, but I don't want to cut it. I don't want to risk damaging it. Your side cutters, if you put them flat up against the, your piece and just simply pick it off. Now you can use side cutters. You can use wire cutters like that, a little set. But these side cutters, they basically, if you do it right, they go flush against the piece that you're taking off. And you're not going to have a lot of excess to cut and trim off of the actual model when you're done with it. So, just like that. Cuts it down, makes it a lot easier to work with. Uh, $6 at Hobby Lobby, literally. These things are so worth it. Now, just a regular X-Acto knife and a, and a handle will work. But this one, I actually ordered this online. Um, it was actually a miniature... Uh, saw blade set now. I do have them just not here with me right now. Oh as a matter of fact I do so this little nice little saw blade set Okay Where they they're they're fun to use they're they're you know, they're lightweight and the cool thing is It grabs a hold of your it, or excuse me, it twists to lock it in. Now there is a little piece, this little metal piece that sits inside there that makes it kind of hard to work with. So I actually took that out um, to use my X-Acto blades. And I always have a pack of these on hand. Again, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, two, three, four dollars. Uh, this online, ten dollars for this little set, I believe. So I always have those on hand, always. Now, um, so that's the, so that's kind of the basics on getting your uh, getting some some exacto knives, your blades, anything like that. Um, so that's kind of what makes it um, a little bit easier when you're getting stuff put together. Now, let's say that you're working on, um, we'll say, an airplane wing. But it keeps kind of popping up in certain places. You have to hold it down forever and it's annoying. Well, what do I do? Harbor Freight. Here's your answer. These little clips, they come in various sizes. And they have these little maneuverable um, grips. Okay. Come in numerous sizes. They're... Four or five dollars for a pack of these, uh, and you get a decent amount in the pack. So you can paint. We you can paint them while they're there. Anything like that. The other thing that I like to have on hand is actually one of these adjustable clamps. Now again, they come in a different size. I think these individually are about three or four dollars a piece. But um, especially when you're doing fuselage or uh, boat pieces or anything like that. You can get a few of these and clamp them down, and you can make them as tight as you want, and it helps keep them keep it uh, together while you while your components are drying. Okay, so that actually kind of segues into this next thing. Um, what type of glue do I use? Well, I myself I like to use the Citadel plastic glue. This is made by uh, the creators of Warhammer. Um, same thing with the brushes and some of my paints. So, uh, this stuff will last you forever. You can do, um, I, I have a combat patrol set. I have a tank that I'm about to do. I have aircraft. I have figurines. Um, I have not used even half of this bottle. So, this stuff is different from, say, Gorilla Glue. And the reason being is this. Gorilla Glue, Gorilla Glue will actually crystallize. So, it crystallizes and it breaks very easily. So if you've invested your time and your money into figurines and models um, for Necromunda or Warhammer like I have, you don't want components be, to be breaking off. This is different in the fact that this actually, uh, through chemical reaction, melts the plastic together. Now, the one thing you need to keep in mind when you're doing this, like we've done with B25 cockpit, 
is you need clean surface when you're putting these together because if you do it on paint it's not going to stick right it's not going to it's not going to adhere correctly so that is one thing to keep in mind and that is the citadel plastic glue you can get those online you can get them in a warhammer store um, for me this is worth it now let's look at a couple other things here real quick so let's say that you're working with some really tiny pieces like I've done in the past with the German infantry, uh, very, very small pieces. I've got big hands, so it's not exactly the easiest thing to work with. Well, let's look at tweezers, okay? Now, I've, I prefer having a couple different types. You have your open set, you just have your regular set of tweezers that you can... Uh, pick up your small pieces with and maneuver. So this is a piece off of a Ambot that I'm working on for Necromunda. So easy to pick up. I can maneuver it. It helps me set it in place. Or the other one I, that is an absolute must-have for me is a set of clamping tweezers. So something you might have seen in biology class when you're doing all these handy experiments, blah, blah, blah. This makes it easier. So just simply hold it and it's in my hand just like that and it's holding on your piece quick and easy the uh, just a few bucks you can get them online Hobby Lobby um, you can get sets of them from uh, Harbor Freight so there's plenty of different options there now say let's say that we're working on a certain piece that you don't want paint to get on one side but you know your hands not as steady say for example you're working on a car well what am I gonna do to Mia let's talk to Mia to Mia masking tape this is a six millimeter wide holder and the cool thing is it just comes out just like that And really handy to have. I, this is a must-have. Now, here's the cool thing. Are you thinking, oh, well, you just throw it away when you're done. Uh-huh. This pops off. And you can replace it. Now, they come in various sizes. Um, I think this was five, six, seven dollars um, on Amazon. That's where I got it. But this is very handy to have. Um... I love having this. I've got regular blue masking tape that I keep on hand. Uh, anything from that wide to that wide, depending on the project that I'm doing. But that is a definite must. And especially when you're doing fine detail work, like let's say we need to do a chrome piece. Okay, well, we take that off. And that's it. Granted, my handling skills a lot better than that. <laughs> Anyways. So um, then you have things that you can use like this for washing your brushes. Uh, this is, again, this is Citadel. Um, it's got these really nice, now of course it's full, but on the side and on the bottom, it's got really nice ridges that you can just take your brush and that gets excess water off. Um, and there you go. So I, this was a little bit more expensive, um, but I love having it. Um, I even use these little jars that I've gotten on Amazon. Any cup, any bowl, anything you, anything works. Um, I keep uh, a thing of alcohol in hand uh, because after a while it's going to build up. Uh, the paint use is going to build up. Um, typically, especially when you're using an acrylic paint, you need to use uh, soap and water. Soap and water works just fine. But if I've been painting for a while and I see that these are starting to get dingy, I will take a jar and some fresh alcohol. So prime example, you know, this is a, I've been painting all day with this, as a matter of fact. So you just come and this will help take out some of those, some of the staining. It's not going to do it all. But your brush is definitely going to become a lot cleaner. 
Okay, so uh, that is an option to use, but so but soap and water, especially for acrylic paints. Now let's talk about that paints. Okay, so I've got a bunch of different things that I use, but let's talk beginners for a moment. Walmart has a wonderful selection of uh, apple barrel paints. Um, let's let's grab some and take a look here. So a lot of these colors you can get from Hobby Lobby. You can get these from Walmart, Target, uh, anywhere that has a craft section. Now, this is this is just a start. You know, this is honestly how I started I, by using Walmart paints. Uh, dollar fifty two dollars. Okay, um, Hobby Lobby they love to put their stuff on sale. Um, folk art they do. Unfortunately, they don't do ceram coat anymore. But that is a good that is a good brand. Um, folk art is a good one. Apple Barrel. Yeah, uh, you dominantly will see that at Walmart. They have a whole slew of colors. So you know, take advantage of that. Um, even metallic colors. I mean, look at that metallic. Okay, um, so that, you know, and I still use these depending on the model that I'm working on, depending on what I'm doing. Uh, some colors I just can't find or they're way too expensive. Now, if you want to do a little bit of a better quality or if you want to do a historic line, a uh, prime example would be the B25 that we're working on. So... This is Vallejo. Vallejo, uh, they've got a an actual histor history line. They have historic colors. So, prime example, U.S. Olive Drab. I've also got ones uh, that are German gray, the Feldgrau German uniform from World War II. Um, let me see if I can actually find one. And there it is. German field gray. And here is your part number to identify it that is the authentic german field uniform um prime example would be right here look at this this is hans look at that he has the german field gray uniform okay vallejo i have so many colors and i will definitely continue to use them so there is that there's 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 that line now, testers. Um, testers is a good one to start with. Here's a prime example. Hobby Lobby, $2.69 a piece. Um, keep in mind, these are enamel. There is a difference between your acrylics and your enamels, okay? An acrylic is a water-based paint, okay? So, cleans off very easily. Um, soap and water. Enamels are oil-based. So, they definitely smell. Um, they definitely have a smell to them. They can be a little bit tricky to clean the brushes. Uh, but when they dry, they, they're a little bit more vibrant. They are a bit more vibrant than I've seen. Uh, this prime, this example right here is turn signal amber. This is something that we will be using on the B25. Um, but it's a nice color. Okay. So when you're picking out your paints, you need to keep an eye on, uh, what they are. So Vallejo, Citadel, um, Folk Art, the ones that I've showed you are acrylic. Tester is a enamel based. Same thing with their sprays. Now, this is just a little spray can of the Tester's Olive Drab. $8.29 to help do a little bit more, to get a bit more area done when you're working on a model. Um, now let's put these to the side. Now Citadel. Citadel paints, definitely the most expensive out of the ones that I have. Uh, Citadel paints, they come with a base. They'll even they even describe it right here. This is a base layer, so this is a base one base that you put down. Uh, this is the same color, but this is for air spraying. Um, they have so many colors. I recommend that if you really want to look at that, download the Citadel paint app. You can find it on. Um, you can find it on the Google Play Store, and I believe you can also find it on the Apple Store. Um, that will list all of the colors that Citadel makes. They are amazing, high-quality paints. 
That is all I ever use on my figurines. I, I love their colors. I will not use anything else. They are good quality. I, I can't, I can't say enough about the quality of Citadel paints. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at right now. Now, the other thing I'd recommend you do um, is have something like these sandpaper. Like, so get a little bit of some fine grit sandpaper so you can sand down uh, the components that you cut off. So like this, sprue, this piece that I cut off that sprue earlier. So something like that. And you can get these little handy uh, hand files for like four or five bucks at Harbor Freight. Okay. That's all there is to it. So um, with that, you know, don't don't get overwhelmed. Um, this is just this is just scratching the surface of what you can use. I even use a little hand drill. For when I need to drill out a hole that that a cert, that instructions specify, uh, prime example would be on our B25. There's some spots that we need to, to poke out. You can use an exacto knife or or drill. Um, so there there's there's so much. There's so I, I know it can be over. It seems like it's overwhelming, but with I'm hoping with this little guide that I'm uh, putting out there. You know, hopefully this will help for you, for anybody who is just starting, or even those that have been doing it for a while and didn't realize, uh, oh, I can use this, or oh, I can use that. So, um, with this new year, I encourage you, get out there, put, you know, do, do your models, you know, just, this is scratching the surface. This is all about fun. And here's the one thing I want you to remember. You cannot do a model wrong. Okay, mistakes are going to happen along the way. You have the resources to make it even better. Okay, there's no there there there's no wrong way to do a figurine. There's no wrong way to do a model. Um, get little plastic armymen like I like I have. I have a little bag of plastic armymen. I still use to test paint, primers, um, anything like that. You know, so. Yeah, get out there, try it, experiment about it. I hope you all have a good, wonderful year. You know, feel free to drop a comment, you know, if you have any questions or you or you even have your own way of doing things. You know, like and subscribe, you know. I, I, I thank you all for the views. So take this, have a good year, and I will see you all later.